politics and power but how did you really expect me to leave this issue of education and training and not pay homage to the great ancestors who have gone beyond those on whose shoulder we now proudly stand now remember on a few episodes ago we discussed the idea of right and wrong and truth and falsity true and false are subjective terms things can be true today and not true for the people tomorrow because there are different circumstances but right and wrong will always be right and wrong something cannot be right today and that same thing wrong tomorrow as long as you are dealing with humanity if that is wrong it is wrong it does not matter who does it in fact no one should do it and because of their stature and position becomes right if it was wrong yesterday but truth is subjective it depends on who argues for or and on behalf of the truth or the false and how the argument is how persuasive it is it can be adjudged as being true or false but right will always be right and wrong will always be wrong so my position here on education and training will always be what it is and this is simply what we are doing this is not some sort of advocacy for any particular individual or group of people it is just a critical reasoning on an area that I believe needs that kind of reasoning, especially at this juncture. So with that being explained, you have to remember that survival depends on what we know, where we know, how we know. And before people were formally trained, they were surviving. They were educated. They depended on their sense of the environment. In fact, probably before those sort of formal systematic training and or understanding, people were more in touch with their true selves. No, I'm not saying that formal training is not good. I am never going to cry down formal, systematic, organized scientific training. To me, that's the ultimate, if you ask me. But what occurred before that? Am I now to say that my ancestors, who had not had the privilege of being so trained, were not educated? So if they were not educated, how were they able to survive the many hurricanes and disasters and the many, many years of tribulation and trial and persecution, slavery even? You had to have had some level of tolerance, understanding, discipline, education to survive. My grandmother barely stepped foot in a school and she was the most educated person that I know. My great grandmother, Mama, she never owned a book. She probably never wrote in a book. But do you think that there was someone who was more educated than my great grandmother, Mama? No. My grandfather told me he never owned a book. He wrote on a slate and he has never seen his handwriting because every time he wrote, he had to clean the slates clean for the next set of lessons. So he never saw his handwriting on a book ever. And who was more educated than my deceased grandfather? While these are rhetoric questions, I would hope that you would be able to answer those questions, especially people who were born during my time, children of the 70s, because our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents did not have the privilege that we now have so readily available. But is anyone going to convince me or you that there's anybody who's better educated than the parents who taught you life? Politics and power.